This is schoolhouse number eight. It is a one-room schoolhouse that we bring the students to to experience life a hundred years ago. We are going to get ready to walk down to the schoolhouse. We're going to walk with a partner. We're going to stay on the sidewalk. Third grade students are actually divided into three grade levels, third, fourth, and fifth. Once they hear the school bell ring, they go back in time. They're time travelers. The grassroots of our country started with education in one-room schoolhouses. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. So all the history is right here. The Visitors will find their grandparents' pictures, they'll find their relatives. When you enter the schoolhouse, we're going to be time travelers, okay? This is your first day of school in the year 1900. You've had a wonderful summer vacation, but when you hear that bell ring, we're going to start with the girls' row to come in single file. Nice to meet you, Landon. We're all in our places with bright, shining faces. Good morning. Good morning. And you are? Logan. Nice to meet you, Logan. Oh, this is the way to start a great day. A lot of genealogists come in and want to see their name, the great-great-grandparents' name uh, in writing. Uh, so we have many of those records. It's a one-room schoolhouse. and. There's a bunch of different grades in one room. On this blackboard, I have written your assignments for the deck. Like you have to stand up and talk, and you can't like walk up to the teacher. It's just to copy the Pledge of Allegiance in your best round handwriting. It's harder. Who can tell me what the word pledge means? Starlet, please rise. It means a promise, okay. To the Republic. A nation that elects the leaders. It starts out with independent activities that each grade level works on at their desk. Back then, you, can, you learned a lot more. Well, one advantage would be that the older students in the older grades could help out the students in the younger grades because there usually was one school teacher in charge of several grade levels. So she had to multitask in order to make sure every child was taken care of. No one's talking to each other, so it's kind of easier to concentrate. You have to try to figure it out. You can't just like mosey around, you have to try to figure it out. I'm going to give us about five minutes and we'll take a short recess. Go! <laughs> we got to learn how they learned in the 1900s and we got to play with the toys they would play with at recess. It's the second most popular artifact at the museums. There's three different size holes because you have students that range from uh, first grade up to eighth grade. Did you get a good look in there? Now who wants to go in and sit down? Would you like to do that? No? So does anybody want to sit down? No. Sure. <laughs> I think this is my size. There are three different size holes there. Disgusting. Let me see if it's my size. Would you get slivers if you sat? No, you really didn't get slivers. <laughs> I would just stay away from this. It's cool. <laughs> I like it. So do you think you'd like to use this kind of toilet? It's no. no. Proper toilet. It can be really fun learning, like learning what used to happen and how things worked. You'll see jackknives. Back in those days, every boy carried a jackknife. It's actually really good for you to learn how they l live learned and just played and all the games and stuff. Ring around the rosy, pocket full of posy, ashes, ashes, we all fall down. 
So many times you've heard the saying that to know where you're going, you need to know where you've been. And so this is where we've been. Nick, please rise. It's an illustration that they did indeed educate uh, students well. well. They need someone to tell me who is Theodore Roosevelt? Carissa. He's the youngest president. Students in one room schoolhouses went on to be presidents of companies, uh, Pratt and Lambert being one of them. Uh, a graduate of the North Collins went on to become attorney general in New York State. So the list is endless in terms of people that went on to be very, very successful. Good job, let's read it together, everyone. 6,910. This is an important element of our history and our culture back then. Uh, and so that's why this museum exists.